need to worry. I will protect the kingdom. My hair is doing that thing we both love. Whoa! Nobody ever goes into the dark forest! I'm not afraid of that. Tell me where the inspiration for this came from, the idea came from. The inspiration came to me a long time ago, about 15 years ago. I have two daughters, and I'd made Star Wars for 12-year-old boys. And I decided, well, maybe I'll make a film for 12-year-old girls. And um, so I started working on it, and I was doing other things at the same time, but I decided that I would just keep plugging away on this thing. And uh, that's really what the inspiration was. I wanted to do, uh, where Star Wars is more mythologically oriented, this is more fairy tale oriented. You don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance. But at the same time, I wanted to basically have fun. I like music, I love working with music, so... The idea of maybe trying to make a movie where the story is told in music, but existing music, mm -hmm. uh, fascinated me. It's, you know, uh, I've been in this world before between American Graffiti and also Labyrinth and Willow and things where, you know, musical fairy tales, I love them. And I just wanted to see if I could make one where we all know the music, but the words tell the story. A little thing inside. We caught you fair and square. Hand it over. In terms of that music, I mean, was it what got you rocking out in the voice booth? I feel like this is a different voice booth kind of experience, like little mini solo concerts. You know what? The experience in the booth is, is like, number one, it's a workout. Because you can't play a character like Sonny and not be over the top and not be boisterous and just not be energized. It's, uh, there's a lot of times where I left the booth, like, sweating because it was so, it was so active. And um, the music element was something that brought me home. Like, I grew up singing in church. Uh, I've done musicals, done musical theater before. Let me ask you about one of your other worlds, Star Wars. Uh, how involved will you be, if at all? What are your thoughts on what you know of it? I don't know anything. I'm going to be surprised. The great feeling for me is that uh, I always used to say I never got to see Star Wars. That's my one regret. I never got to be wowed by the ship coming over, uh, and now I'm going to be. So now I get to be surprised like everybody else. Does it amaze you that every little tidbit or any mention of Star Wars gets such a big reaction? Does it still amaze you how passionate the fans are over all these years? It's always been that way. So that's how you react to a near-death experience? And then when you approach something like this, which is a new world you've created, do you always look at it as kind of creating a world, not just a movie from start to finish? Well, you have to create a world. It's very, you know, that's part of it. Uh, and I enjoy that part of it, which is why my movies have a lot of yeah. fantasy in them, um, just because it's fun, and I like to create that stuff. So the process is really ridiculous, though. Like, if you think about all the movies that you do, like the worlds that you create, it pretty much makes the movie an easier, you know, like a sale, or even easier story to tell. Like, right. this universe you created with this is just, like, spot on. Well, this, this universe is something that, in, in theory, could be in your backyard. Yeah. And it's the, especially the sets and everything are very photorealistic. And so the idea is you could go out in your backyard and you might find these characters, and they obviously look like butterflies, and they look like bugs, and they look like things. So you could, if you use your imagination a little bit, you can imagine that this actually exists. I love you. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Ugh. Oh, I think I got one of your antennas. <laughs>